Hi, my name is Daniel Westbrook, and today we're going to be talking about adding space underneath your home, which is known as a house lift. And we're going to be talking today with Catherine Pells of Catherine Pells Architecture, who specializes in remodel and also house lifts. Catherine, happy to have you here with us. Happy to be here, Daniel. So what exactly is a house lift in sort of a general description? Well, a house lift is lifting up your house and making the basement equally valuable living space as on the main floor. And you get a lot more light, you, you know, can, can clean up the space and, and all the utilities and things like that. So what are some of the advantages of doing a house lift? One of the main reasons why people do house lifts is that their basement is failing for some reason. Either the ceiling height's too low or they've got water coming in mm -hmm. and they need to do something. They need to fix it. And either they can fix it and make it an entire new floor of livable space or they can just fix it with the low ceiling and, mm -hmm. and that. So that's what sometimes gets homeowners to come to me because they have a problem already mm -hmm. that they need to solve and they might as well make right. it to be right eight foot ceilings and if you're going to be into it already you might as well go all the way and right make it make right it worth it the way a house is lifted you have an opportunity to redo the foundation in its entirety mm -hmm. a new slab get all the water management systems in place and get back to a really solid house for what i think is a reasonable return on your investment Extra square footage is really a valuable thing, whether it's on the main floor or in the basement. I mean, it's great space for offices and media rooms, yeah. and you know, you could house a loved one, you can have rental income to offset the mortgage. And I think the resale value will be much increased by having that rental unit potential in the basement. So if if a homeowner's considering this as an option, what are some of the you know challenges in the beginning? The the challenges of a house lift are similar to uh, challenges that are in any construction process other than that very short time when it's truly in the air. Some of the logistical challenges have to do with access to the site. We're working on a project right now where we had to bring some big steel beams off of a main arterial. And you have to stop traffic for a little bit of time. You've got these steel beams that need to be moved under a house. And the other challenge for contractors has to do with um, just informing the neighbors of maybe the process because you've got to park big trucks on the street you know, this is normal for construction though. I mean. So with that, what are some of the living challenges that a homeowner can expect through that process, generally speaking? I typically recommend that homeowners don't stay in the house when it's lifted. Mm -hmm. Now that's only for a short time though. It's only four to eight weeks that the house is lifted in the air. But as you can imagine, there are some things that can happen that can be problematic. But a lot of people want to do it. and. The best time to do a house lift is in the summer where you can get through the house lift and put it down on a nice, solid, level foundation. So the dry season as opposed to the, the wet season. Right. And that has to do with excavation, problems with excavation and water and, and keeping water out of the basement while a new foundation is being laid. Well, and then the other thing is utilities. What can the homeowner expect with with interruption to utilities. Water and sewer and electricity are the three things that you can usually have throughout the duration of the project. They just can be extended. Just they'll be disconnected for a day or so and then hooked back up exactly. temporarily. And, yeah. So those things can be um, similar to what you would normally have in your house. The challenge comes in when you think about um, heat and the gas line being disconnected. So if you have a stove that is a gas stove, um, it might require you to either eat out a lot or... Or do something temporary electric. Do something temporary I mean, we do that electric. in our remodels all the time. I mean, you still get disturbances to, to utilities, no matter what kind of remodel you're doing. You know, if you're doing a, a kitchen remodel or whatever, you're still exactly. being disturbed and you still have to set up a temporary. I mean, if you're a homeowner, you've never experienced this before, how long do they need to commit to sort of an average house lift 
project. The cool thing about house lifting in the optimal time, which is starting in like June or July mm -hmm. in Seattle, um, the process will take six to nine months in its entirety. So you can kind of get everything lifted down on a solid foundation and dried in. Pretty quickly. Yeah, before the rain hits. So finally, what is your role as an architect through the process of a house lift? My role is to take the client's priorities and put them into a design and take it through permitting, hiring a contractor that fits into a team of people that's gonna work to build a house lift. A lot of clients hire me to come in twice a month to help get things on schedule, answer any questions that the contractor has, and to just uh, problem solve. Is, and provide redesign if that's necessary or... Absolutely. Or the homeowner is a really integral part of the process. I like to have them be part of the communication process with the contractor. It's really the team working together and everyone communicating that makes the project work and come out the way it ideally should. Catherine, thanks for being with us today. I really appreciate it. It was great talking to you, Daniel. My name is Daniel Westbrook. Catherine Pells, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>